The veil leading into the Holy of Holies is an important item as you build up the suspense of the tabernacle with your students. What is behind that veil and why can't we just walk right in? To the Israelites, the veil might as well have been a cement wall. It was a barrier that signaled stop, do not enter, authorized personnel only. For behind that veil was the very presence of God himself. In fact, when teaching children, hanging a sign such as this one on your veil only adds to the suspense. As you teach, start with the restrictions. No one was allowed behind the veil except the high priest, and even then, only once a year on the Day of Atonement. Build that wall up and then create a bridge. Show your students how God tore that veil from top to bottom as Jesus died on the cross, allowing access to those that take that first step of faith. It can be very effective to lay down a wooden cross on the ground for students so that they can cross the cross bridge for the first time and see the Ark of the Covenant hidden inside. And know that this side of the cross they can enter the presence of God anytime they wish. This can be a life-changing experience for students if you lay the biblical foundation and build up the suspense. Finding the right fabric for the veil can be a challenge. The Bible tells us that the veil was a woven fabric of red, blue, and purple. Finding this exact combination can be a little tricky short of weaving it yourself. Let me show you some of the ones I have used. This is a purple and red cloth with a hint of blue. I like it because it's muted and it really has a rich feel to it. Years ago, I found some large posable cardboard angels and I hung them against this fabric for the cherubim. If you can't find pre-printed angels, perhaps you have creative students who can draw some cherubim for you. I have folded this fabric to a width of four inches to visualize how thick the veil in the temple was when it was torn from top to bottom on the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. I asked students to try to rip it on their own, and of course they can't, helping them come to the conclusion that only God could have torn that veil, granting them access into his presence. Another fabric I have used is this red and gold cloth. I like the introduction of the gold because the walls in the tabernacle were gold. But the reality is, under the harsh lights, the orange tones dominated. And when I added the red, blue, and purple elements elsewhere in the tabernacle, it really didn't match. I added large tassels to it to anchor it and give it some depth, but I still wasn't entirely happy with this fabric. And so I was thrilled to find a woven fabric that prominently featured the reds, blues, and purples in the tabernacle. This fabric is called Covington Jackie O 150 Mardi Gras. I'll put the link to this fabric in the comments section for you. It was still available as of December 2018. This is a smaller version of the veil that I have behind me. I actually use this as a valance on the gate to the courtyard. The gate, the veil in the tabernacle, and one of the four coverings of the tabernacle are all the same woven fabric of blue, red, and purple. Since fabric can be expensive, I have found other ways to pull these colors into the tabernacle. For instance, you can use gossamer or tulle. This really works well on the ceiling or skimming along the top of the walls. You can braid gossamer and add these long strands at the gate or in between your gold panels or make a quantity of them and use them as your veil. Line them up and clip them to the structure that you're using as your Holy of Holies. Or you can simply tie it to a horizontal bar. Either way, make sure that you braid these tightly and you can tie off both ends. I have also used plastic table coverings as walls to the tabernacle. 
This is a very cheap and easy way to get your students to remember the three colors in the tabernacle. Once, I had the art teacher enlist the help of students to paint woven patterns onto paper that we displayed near the gate. Use your imagination, and I am sure that you will figure out how you can bring in these red, blue, and purple colors into your tabernacle. If you are using fabric as your veil, sew a simple pocket along the top edge so that it can be hung onto a PVC framework. Just make sure that you measure well so that whatever rod you are using fits nicely through the hole. This is the veil that I use in the latest version of the tabernacle. I added some gold trim, which I simply glued on to the fabric. And these cherubim are made using Cricut Design Space, a Cricut machine, and iron-on transfers. If you don't own a Cricut machine and are interested in obtaining angels for your veil, please contact me as I am happy to accommodate special orders. However, if you have access to a Cricut machine, in the next video I will show you step by step how to create these magnificent golden cherubim for your tabernacle. This is Becky from Experience the Bible Creatively reminding you that props are always better than paper.